Do you choose the right friends? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Aaron Ralston had been climbing the narrow canyons of Utah alone when a dislodged boulder fell on his right arm, trapping him against a rock. He was entombed in the wilderness of Blue John Canyon, carrying a small rock sack with just one liter of water, two burritos, and a few chunks of chocolate. He had headphones and a video camera, but no mobile phone, and there was no reception anyway. Most foolishly of all, he had not told anyone where he was going. He eked out his water, futilely chipping away at the 800-pound rock and slowly entering a state of delirium until he was eventually forced to cut off his trapped arm with a small knife from his cheap multi-tool kit. After two days spent fruitlessly chipping away at the rock with his knife and devising a clever but futile system of pulleys with his climbing clips and ropes to hoist the boulder clear, he was defeated because climbing rope is stretchy and he couldn't obtain the required tension. He put his knife to his arm only to find it was so blunt he couldn't even cut his body hair. By the fifth day, Ralston had found peace in the knowledge that I'm going to die here, this is my grave. In the middle of his final night, hallucinating through hunger, lack of water, and three sea temperatures, he had a vision of a small boy. I see myself in this out-of-body experience playing with him with a handless right arm. I see myself scoop him up, and there's this look in his eyes. Daddy, can we play now? That look tells me this is my son. This is in the future. I'm gonna have this experience someday. Now it's like I'm going to get through this night. The next morning finally came the rage and its revelation that Ralston could fling himself against the boulder to break his own bones. From then it was easy. The snap of his bones, like pow, was a horrifying sound, but to me it was euphoric, he recalls. In the canyon, Ralston calculated it would take him at least 10 hours to find medical help and he would bleed to death. But using pieces of climbing kit as a tourniquet, he strapped himself up and somehow managed to scale a 65-foot cliff to escape the canyon. Exposed to the fierce sun, he was found by three Dutch tourists who gave him water and helped him stagger on before he was picked up by a search and rescue helicopter dispatched by his family to look for him. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus' disciples try to prevent someone from doing the Lord's work just because he is not one of them. Jesus gives them a stern rebuke. Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against us is for us. Jesus asks us to examine our relationships, the people we associate with, the people who come into our lives in different ways. There are people who walk with us in our spiritual journey, who encourage us to keep going, even during the tough times. As friends, they even challenge us to improve ourselves to be more like Christ, giving us fraternal correction that we may dislike, akin to a bitter pill we need to swallow. There are people who we look from afar with admiration. They show the way to a Christ-like living with their kindness and goodness, their calm and gentle demeanor, their wisdom and fortitude, their generosity of spirit and their good example. But there are also people who come to us who lead us away from our baptismal calling. They can be deceiving, befriending us and getting into our comfort space, oftentimes to win our trust. They bring us to the wrong places and introduce us to the wrong friends. They tempt us with temporal pleasures, teach us to crave for the material possessions, keep us addicted to sinful things. Their words, manners, and lifestyle reek of the underworld. We too can become obstacles to others in their calling towards holiness. When we think that our way to the Lord is the right way, we can be self-righteous and imposing on others, just like the disciples who had a narrow perspective of how the Lord's work should be done. St. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, do not restrain the Holy Spirit. We can restrain the work of the Holy Spirit in many ways. One reason is because they belong to other Christian religions or ethnicity. Or as suggested in today's first reading, we can be motivated by jealousy as Joshua was for Moses. Let us not forget that the Holy Spirit blows as it wills, dismissing the good work of others because it is not how we think it should be done or because of envy in our hearts is to forget that the Holy Spirit works in many different ways in people's lives. Let us not be the boulder that will pin down the spiritual enthusiasm of people around us. Let us cut off the part in us that hinders our own spiritual growth and that of others. 
Stay away from people who will demonize you. Keep on nurturing others and be joyful and grateful that the Holy Spirit touches others. Only then can we truly experience the euphoria of freedom from our boulders and using them as stepping stones to our heavenly kingdom. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, let your Holy Spirit work in me so that I may rid myself of anything and all that may be contrary to my baptismal calling. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.